GPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. church. Thank you, pastor, and I forgive you, Brian. <laughs> Today's moment in black history will be on Mosiah, Mosiah Bridges, also known as Mo, was born on November 13, 2001, in Memphis, Tennessee. Mo developed a strong liking to style from his dad, who was always a very sharp dresser, and he said he would even wear three-piece suits on their outings together to places like McDonald's. <laughs> on a weekend running errands with his mom at the local mall, Mo saw a display of very expensive bow ties. He asked his mom to buy him one, but she didn't budge. She didn't buy it. After that, Mo began doing his own research and found out there, there weren't many high quality bow ties to fit his style personality on the market. He also found out where he could sell his own bow ties. In 2011, at the age of nine, 
Mo, with the help of his grandmother, who was a retired seamstress, began crafting his own creative, colorful bow ties. And Mo's bows was founded. Mosiah's mother became his business partner and assistant compiling orders while Mo was in school during the day. As a team, they would hand make every order and ship them after school. In 2005, he and his mom appeared on the TV series Shark Tank and, and secured a mentorship from Damon John. That same year, Mo got the opportunity to be the style representative for the 2015 NBA draft where he supplied bow ties with a lot of the rookies for that particular draft. Soon, let, soon after that, Mo got a seven-figure deal from the NBA, which gave him exclusive rights to use the NBA logo and teams on his bow ties. Mo has many interviews and appearances under his belt, including the Steve Harvey Show, Good Morning America, CBS News, Forbes Magazine, Time Magazine, Black Enterprise, and Business Insider. Moe's Bowes began originally selling products on Estee. However, however, he has his own website now called MoesBowesMemphis.com and is also on Amazon. Moe's Bowes is also in department stores like Neiman Marcus and Bloomingdale. Mo's Bowls profits continue to grow yearly and rank among the best brands on the market for luxury high-end bow, bow ties, with an estimated net worth of $1.5 billion. <laughs> Mo also sells other accessories like neckties and uh, pocket squares. Mo's Mosiah Bridges, CEO and Creative Director of Mo's Bows, our moment in back history. <laughs> and for our black history fact of the day, Alonzo Lonnie Clayton, who reached stardom as, at the age of 15 when he became the youngest rider to win the Kentucky Derby, was born on March 27, 1876 in Kansas City, Missouri. Thank you. And again today, we ask you to speak to us through your word, that the power of the Holy Ghost would manifest the word. And we'll give you praise because we asked it in Jesus' name, amen. It said, angels give praise to God. The primary purpose of angels is to worship and praise God. Then I have angels are messengers from God. Angels protect believers. If you're a believer, the angels will protect you. Angels strengthen and comfort believers. And they also carry out God's judgment. And then when the believer die, the angel is the one who takes you to heaven. So don't forget it. In Psalms 91, it says in verse 11, the Lord will give his angels charge over you to protect you in all your ways. Angels are heavenly beings and they serve as messengers of God. I always heard that there were only male angels, that there were no female angels. I looked in Zechariah chapter 5, starting at verse 5, and it said there was two women with wings. All angels do not have wings. Y'all got that? Some of them appear, and people don't know that they're entertaining angels unaware. But didn't Isaiah say, I saw these angels, seraphims, all of them, and they had wings, and they were all praising God. They were all saying, holy, holy, holy. 
in Revelation chapter 14 and 6. You can read, I, I can't give y'all all the scriptures I have today. I got so many. You can uh, read what God said about two different things. Maybe I should get my Bible and read that. Let me see. Okay. I get up early in the morning and I read a lot. So I can't come here and just read it all to you. You would be here a long time. Because sometimes I get up at 3.30 and it'll be 6.30 when I stop reading. Okay, Revelation 14 and 6. If you know the word of God and you know what God has said, it's better. And I don't want you to be saying Pastor Ely said it. I'd rather for you to say God said it right. And that's what you ought to say that God said it. Amen. Revelation 14 and 6, John said, and I saw another angel, that meant he had seen one before, right? Fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwelt on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come to worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. I found that angels are mentioned in the Bible. You might want to write it down 273 times. And the angels were created by God. They didn't just create themselves. Angels don't die. They, they live forever. And you can find that in Luke 20 and 36. I'll let you write it down because I got so much up with him. Angels were present when God created the world. And that's in Job 38, verses 1 through 7. Why do you think Job is the one said it? The book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It's not the first book, but it's the oldest book in the Bible. When Job was writing, there was dinosaurs, and he wrote about them, how they could blow fire into the ocean and the water would boil and all of that kind of stuff. Job 30 and 30, Job made it very plain to tell us, I am black. Job was a black man. And he said it in Job 30 and 30. When the man came over here, he was so happy. He said that I gave him scriptures about these black people in the Bible, and it showed him where it was found and he had bought a lot of more books. And a lot of people don't want to hear it, and they said, what difference do it make? And I, they don't want to hear it. And one lady didn't even want to hear Jesus is black. You ought to have been happy to know he was black like you. Angels don't marry. If you look at Matthews 22 and 30, the angels do not marry. They are wise and they are intelligent. They are not stupid. Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 17, and Daniel 9 and 22. May I put these few words in here? Don't call me when I get home and ask me, where you sit, where did you find that at? <laughs> They take an interest in human affairs, according to Daniels 10 and 14, and Luke 16 and 10. Whenever a person accepts the Lord, the Bible said the angels rejoice, because they are not allowed to lead anybody to the Lord. God gave us that job, but they can rejoice and they can shout whenever anybody accepts the Lord. Angels 
are faster than humans. The surprise said they are faster than lightning. They come really fast. One angel can kill thousands. It don't take a whole lot of angels. That's in Daniel 9, 21, and that's in Revelation 14 and 6, 2. Angels are spiritual beings, according to Psalms 104 and 4. Angels are not meant to be worshipped. You're not supposed to be worshiping angels. When I first got married, I went to a church, and the pastor had a big angel, and he had it all lit up, and he wanted us to march by and bow. I was 19 years old, but I knew that was wrong, that we shouldn't be bowing in front of angels. Only person we're supposed to bow to is God. He is, he is the one who created us. He did everything. So we bow and worship him. Because every time an angel would come and somebody fall down, they said, get up. And they would tell that person, you worship God. Because they were worthy to be worshiped. Only God deserves to be worshiped, okay? They're subject to Christ. If you read in 1 Peter 3 and 22, they have a will. You got a will. You can do right or you can do wrong, can't you? But you got a will. So these angels, they got a will. And if you, if you read in the Bible, uh, one time a, a mule saw an angel, and the man was beating the mule and, and they were trying to make the mule go, and the mule saw that there was danger ahead. The mule even saw the angel, and they didn't see the angel. And then the mule spoke up and said, well, I thought that was enough for him to faint when he said, why are you beating me? Haven't I been a good mule? He did. Everything that you need to know is in the Bible. If it had been me, and I was like I write about myself, you think I'm gonna write the bad stuff about me? Wouldn't you just write the good stuff? Usually when people die, everybody got something good to say about them. Nobody said the bad stuff, but God put it all in the Bible. If somebody did something wrong, he said it. He said, David is a person after my own eye. But he told when David did the wrong thing. He told David, said, David, I want you to go to war. And you know, it's, it's always something that catch your eye when, when you got a job to do for God. The devil always puts something there. And he, the devil said, well, why don't you go out and walk on, on the roof up there? So while he was walking, he saw this. By the way, for your information, David was black too. He saw this black woman out there taking a bath. And he sent his servant and said, go get her. I want her. She came back. She said, King David, I'm married. Mm, that don't make no difference. Do you know who I am? I'm the king. Then she, she ended up pregnant. God put it in there. And she said, oh, King David, I'm pregnant. He said, well, we can fix that. I'm the king, right? I'll go have your husband brought out the army, and we'll get, we'll, we'll, he'll, I'll get him drunk. And then he'll go home and stay with you, and he's going to think it's his baby. God is a wonder. So he said, uh, Uriah, you've been such a good servant. I want you to come out the army and go home and stay with your wife a couple of weeks. He said, oh, King, I can't do that. All of my fellow friends are out there fighting. He says, OK, let's have a party. So y'all know what happened at the party. And had plenty of good liquor, plenty of wine and stuff. He said, Uriah, just enjoy yourself. Drink all you want. Uriah got drunk, right? And then he, he couldn't go home. He slept on the steps. Then they said, uh, King David, do you know Uriah didn't go home? What? What did he do? He slept on the steps all night. He says, well, 
that's okay, I'll fix it. He said, I'll send him back to the army. And I said, put him on the front line. Put him on the front line, he got killed. And then David told me, but she would say, oh, come on, honey, we can get married now, your husband dead. God didn't have to, he put it there to let you know those things happen. And then they had the baby, and then he said, oh, he, he forgot about it. He forgot what he had done. You can do wrong so long, you will forget that you have done wrong. And then one day the prophet came along. Maybe they came to Puritan Street. And they said, oh, who told you about somebody that told you about me? He said, no. He said, I want to tell you a little story. He said, once upon a time, there was a man who had a lot, of, a lot of sheep. There was another man, didn't, King David had more than one wife. But Uriah didn't have but one. And King David jumped up and said, that man ought to be killed. You ought to kill him. Then the words of hallelujah. Say, you are the one. You are the person. And then if you read Psalms 51, David repented, and he said, Lord, if you forgive me for that, he said, I'll serve you. I'll build you a church. And God said, no, you can't build me no church because you got blood on your hand. He said, but you can collect the money and you can give some money, but you can't build the church. So all this bad stuff that happened in the Bible, God put it in there. One lady had a man laying in her lap. He had his head out in her lap, and she took a nail and nailed it through his skull and killed him. All of that is in your Bible, but you don't want to know it. Matter of fact, you don't even want to know about the sin you're doing. Because when you come to church and you hear a word from the pulpit and it's hitting where you are, that old preacher talks about me. And the old, old preacher don't know nothing about you. Just preaching the word of God. The words that I speak, God said they are spirit. The words that I speak, they are truth. And the words are powerful. They're supposed to be sharper than a two-edged sword. And if the word find you on anything, that means God wants you to know that. And what, it, what, what time is it? It's time for you to turn around then. That's all. But the Bible is a good book that you ought to read. It'll help you get out of many things. The angels have emotions, like joy. They can laugh. They can be happy. They can dance. All of that stuff, they're angels, but that's what they do. But it said they're not omnipresent. God is the only one that's everywhere present at the same time. Just like these angels that was with me, they were with me. They weren't all going on with nobody else, okay? Angels, it's so many angels, you can't even count them. Ain't that so? Too many to count. Let me give you scripture. Psalm 68 and 17 and Hebrews 12 and 10 and 2. Most of the angels, why did I say most, remain faithful to God? Because all the angels didn't remain faithful to God. There was a devil, Lucifer, beautiful. He was the director of the choir. And there were some angels in the choir. And when God kicked the devil out, he kicked them out. Because they were not faithful to God, okay? The angel is not gonna come and tell you anything apart from God, what God has said. And if one come and tell you, like uh, the devil was telling Jesus, jump down off this building. All you gotta do is just jump, jump down. You know God gonna send an angel to catch you. All of them did not obey God. So who, you, who are you going to obey? Isaiah asked us a question, said, who are you going to obey? Are you going to obey God? Or are you going to listen to what somebody else is saying? It's important to obey who? God. God, God knows the end from the beginning. Psalm 
only three angels have been named in the Bible. One was named Gabriel, one was named Michael, and the other one was named Lucifer. You can look at Daniel 8 and 16, 1 Kings 1 and 19, and Luke 1 and 26. Only one angel, listen to this, only one angel in the Bible is called an archangel. That was Michael. Said it might have been more than one, but he's the only one that was named. Angels were created to glorify God, the Father, the Son, in Revelation 4, 8, and Hebrews 1 and 6. And guess what? That's what you made for, to, to glorify God. And when you get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, he gives you power that you'll be able to do the job. Now guess what? The angel see you doing something. God knows everything, right? And the angel go back and report to God what you're doing. Can you believe that? In Job 1 and 6, and Job 2 and 1, the angels come, and they, and they can go back and tell God what you're doing. God don't need any help, does he? But that's what they do. They go back and tell. So just like they do that with God, the angel can come and tell you what's going on. Some people, the angel can be talking to you, you don't even recognize them. And you said, no, that, that was funny. The preacher was, uh, a preacher was saying that somebody was in a bad accident and said it took them 45 minutes to get the truck to get the person out. And so when they got the person out, they said, where is the lady that was holding my hand and telling me to hang on? He said, how could anybody be in the truck and we couldn't even get in there? How did the lady get in the truck? Just like Jesus came through the wall, the angels took. Can't nobody keep them out if they want to come. You ought to be glad that the angels are encamped around about you. He said, as the angels are encamped around about Jerusalem, so, so is the love of God encamped around you. That's a blessing. To know when you go out in the street, you got somebody walking there beside you. And God, uh, our pastor used to tell us, said, if you go where the cross don't cover, said, then the angel back off. So a lot of these people are getting killed. They own their way to somewhere where the cross don't cover. Right? That's what the Bible said. Said, if you go, said, okay. I could have been, on, I was on my way to church yesterday but I could have been on my way to a strip club or anywhere else I wanted to go. And they said, in that situation, the angel just backed off. And, and you own your own. And none of us need to be on our own. I'm almost through. They said, you know, some angels are called seraphims. In Isaiah 6, you, let's read it. You know that. I, could, I can take time and read that. That's not too much. And you know what? I found out something else about them. It says some of them are tall. Did you hear that? Some of them are tall. That's what I had on my windshield, some tall and some short. In the year that King Urzai died. I saw also the Lord sitting up on the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had how many wings? Six wings. And two, they covered his face, and with two, he covered his feet, and with the other two, he did what? He was flying with it. And one cried out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. 
Then I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the presence of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a coal in his hand, which he had taken with a tongue from off of the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and all of your sin also. The angel touched him and burned all of that sin up. Said so there are tall angels and they're able to fly. Angels are known as messengers, host. Some of them are mighty, and some are sons of God, chariots. And I wrote a few more down. But while you and I slumber, and while we sleep, so the angels are keeping watch over us. 